need to find this place or we'll be late. Make a left on Astrology Avenue. Oh, I'm sorry, I meant right. It should be right here at 444 Spirit Way. Oh, turn, turn, turn. It looks like Renee. Yay, we're on time. The James and Kelly Show. Great, let's start the show. Oh, so <laughs> Hi, James. How are you this spring you. day? Oh, it's my favorite season of the year. Me too. Yeah. How is everything the farm is starting to bloom? Is it, well, we're starting to or? see green grass. Oh, that's good. That's a good start. I good actually, start. it was 72 degrees today. Oh, that's great. That's great. So that's I great walked start. around the property with the dogs and we were looking for like oh. little spring buds and I didn't find any, but I will. You will. And I, honestly, year. they'll make me so happy. Oh, it's great. It's great. Now you don't have hummingbirds out there, do you? We do have beautiful hummingbirds, but you we do don't have, have them yet. But right now we have these beautiful woodpeckers everywhere. Oh, they're they're wow. unbelievable. And we also have lots of cardinals and bluebirds and blue jays and red oh, birds and... Yeah. And you have bird feeders, Kelly? Oh, I'll get a picture of my bird feeders. We've got like tons of them. Yeah, tons Dude. of them. And poor Don, they eat so much. He's out there filling them, rain or snow, <laughs> every oh. other day. Around your porch area? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The only thing is that do they get in the ground at all? Oh yeah, the, the dogs bring in the seeds. It's it's a mess. Oh. Yeah. It's it's a mess. <laughs> <laughs> I have one that it's um I have a bird feeder for golden finches and the size of the hole is just for those finches. Yeah. So you see golden finches there. They I think they have them for all different varieties of yeah. birds. Oh yeah, we've but got I all different birds. ones. I love that's watching right. the birds. Yeah. yeah. So you gotta start your new book soon. But yeah, on the farm, being on the farm. As soon as I finish my other book, that's the next book. Yes. Yeah. Lots to do here. My gosh. Lots to do. How how are we looking astrologically? I know this is going to be a rough kind of couple of days. Well, I love that you said couple of days. Yeah. Can, why don't you just extend that just a little bit? Okay. All right, middle of April. <laughs> so I'm going to start with this. I found this Chinese proverb, <laughs> and this will answer <laughs> answer everything. It says, "May you live in interesting times." Perfect. And That's it's the true. truth because if we view this. From we are really fortunate to be able to witness things that we're going through, right? What yeah. an amazing time to be alive. Obstacles are opportunities. Exactly. And we have to remember that. We have to remember that because yeah. this is a very uh, interesting time that we have and challenging, challenging, challenging in the next two to three weeks. So I'm just going to kind of give a couple of headlines for the next few days. All right. Before you do that, as I sit here and think from download to me, um, so the war is going on right now, and yeah. there's a lot of things that people want to do it for uh, uh, Ukrainians and, and, and people that are displaced and so forth. And, and so a lot of people say to me, well, what can I do? And I said, well, let's bring it closer to you. So the war going on far away, but look at your own life right now. How can you make someone else's life better that is not having a good life? So use it here right now for yourself in your own little world. Do it that way. That's how you can help. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's yeah. great. I'm so glad that you, you said that. It's so true. Thank you for that. So yeah. we still are in this thing called a Kalasarpa Yoga. And a Kalasarpa Yoga is when all the planets are on one side of the nodes. And when that happens, and it's been this way since about December 16th, and it goes till about April 6th. So it, we're still in it. Kalasarpa Yoga means great sadness on the planet. So that's, what's happening. Right. that's what's happening. You know, it, it's, it makes it pretty intense. Yeah. So tomorrow is March 22nd and tomorrow Mars and Uranus square. And when you've heard me talk about a square, when they, when two planets square, it makes it very intense. Mars right. is the planet of war and uh, Uranus is the planet of rapid change. A uh, surprise it can be quite uh, quite a, a, an intense day, and I'm talking about tomorrow, because both planets, uh, Mars is in Aquarius and Uranus is in Taurus, and they're both fixed signs. And so tomorrow will be, you know, an, an, probably an intense day. Um, it's probably going to be intense. And then on the 28th of March, 
we have Venus conjunct Saturn. So I'm telling you the big ticket items that are happening in the next few days. So March 28th, Venus conjunct Saturn. And Venus, the planet of love, the planet of hope, the planet of um, peace is going to be next to, conjunct means to be next to at the same degree, Aquarius, uh, um, Saturn, and they're both in Aquarius. And that's going to be also a very intense day because Venus also rules financial. So maybe financially, it may be a more challenging day in the world. Okay. And then what the big ticket, oh, wait, wait, there's another one. Um, I'm, I'm missing this one. No, this is a big one. Then the big, the next big thing is April 5th. And that's the time. And we'll be talking about this as we get close to it. But that's when Mars in Saturn conjunct which means wow. they're next to it. And that day is going to be pretty intense. So we're kind of leading up to this. So what you said, James, is if everybody can really uh, help one another, be kind to one another, do something good, even though we're far away from Ukraine, do something really good, send prayers, certainly, and send money thoughts. if you can. Positive thoughts, positive, positive thoughts. thoughts, positive thoughts, because I believe in hope and I believe that things can change. Definitely. Don't you think? Oh, definitely. Without, without, and if we all put our heads together and send mm -hmm. positive, loving thoughts, they will go somewhere. Yes. The same, so. Yeah. So that's what's going so. on here. Okay. So. Well, welcome, everybody. Let's see uh, who's here today. Okay, now we have. Oh, we have somebody from Australia, James. Leslie from Australia. Okay. Hi, Joanne Wilson says that we need good news and lightness, Kelly. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that for three years now so he really uh, has he I, really uh, has and i uh, i said well. kelly if i speak to you it's new doom and gloom but <laughs> everything kelly has told me through astrology has been 100 percent accurate really you think about it we knew about COVID. we didn't know what it was going to be but we knew there's going to be kind of a surge well was, also in the beginning of at the end of december we did a prediction show and you said those there's going to be a war and actually you said two two wars and i still yeah. think there'll be a second one which will be coming up around soon yeah, with well, these planets, it might probably be a war on top of this one. It might be yeah. in conjunction with this. Yeah, but it'll get better. Eventually. Yeah. Hi there, Connie. So tonight we're going to talk about unfinished business. Okay, so James, let's do this at the same time. Here we go. Ah, there you go. I have it too. Okay, wait, uh, wait. Before you even say anything, James, I have to read this. This is my one of my. This is a great quote. So today during your show, you were talking that when you took the the test, it came up. You said healer and medium, and right. you you actually said you were talking about yourself, and you said you are a healer, which you are. So in unfinished business, there's a great quote from Shirley MacLaine, and I have to read it because everybody needs to know this. It was so great. And this is from Shirley MacLaine. She said. James helps a lot of people. He really is a healer. I think he's basically on this earth right now at this time and place to heal. He is the real thing. I can tell you, I can't tell you how many times he's been right with me. And that's no, Shirley too McLean. Many. Too, many. <laughs> too many times. Yeah. Too many times. <laughs> that's Shirley. Yeah, we have a good relationship, her and I. Yes, we've had some incredible times. Yeah. And um, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. I think yeah, I think that um, you know every medium is different. Every a spirit worker is different, as you know. Everyone is different, which makes it better that way that we celebrate the diversity in every person. I mean, you're a th psychotherapist and a medium. That yep. brings a whole different look at and perspective to things. Yeah. So um, I never try to be like anybody else. Be be yourself. Be the best you you can be. I know there are many mediums that go out there and try to be a great medium and and do a great job, but they forget to work on themselves. And you got to work on yourself as well. You can't just right. be a good technical medium uh, or, or psychic. You've got to work on yourself as well. You got to work on the soul self, and that's really part of it. You can't just do one thing. You got to in totality. You got to do everything. That's really what's, right. what's important. Hi, Judy Friedman. Thank you for texting me the other day, Judy. Hi, I love Judy. That you sent me a lovely picture of us on one of our trips. Oh. I don't do still readings, Katrina. I don't, but I have people on my website that do do readings. So yes. So and. Um, Kelly, don't forget about our trip to uh, to uh, the Danube in September. We're going. Is it this September? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, great! I won't forget now. <laughs> I was just reminded this morning about it, so I gotta. I, we gotta okay. Book it. Good. Super. 
<laughs> um, Unfinished Business was a book that I wrote back in one of the 2000s. Um, it was a book that was done by Harper Collins, and um, I did this book. It was I didn't really know what you know. I never know what I'm going to write about. Um, I do it. In, it was 2009. I wrote this book, and uh, at the time I was doing demonstrations, probably once a month. And demonstrations where I meet a group of people, 200 to 500 people in an auditorium or a hotel or a theater or something. And um, <clears throat> I remember there was a common theme that kept happening over and over again, and the readings were very similar. And it will, a lot of spirits would come through and they'd say, you know, I, I wish I knew this when I was alive. I wouldn't have done this. And there were a lot of should haves, would haves, and could haves. And I got to the boiling point. <laughs> I got to a point, I think, I'm tired of spirits coming through and saying, if only I knew then what I know now. I, sh I should have, would have, could have. So I wanted to write a book where people would read it to have no should haves, would haves, or could haves, to leave this planet clearly and, and, and with a clean conscience and not to hold on to any guilt or resentment when they pass over because that stays with you yeah. when you pass to the other side. So I wanted to do the book because of that, to help people on the earth to have no should haves, would haves, or could haves. And that's what the object of the book was. Well, and what I, I love about the book, James, is it's so psychologically sound. Everything that you say in it. It has uh, wonderful words to help people move on. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> There's a, uh, one a chapter I have here about fear. Mm -hmm. um, this is interesting. I wrote that. Most of our fears have been instilled in us from belief systems, from our parents or religion, or from other people's uh, skewed perceptions. Fear can motivate us to get ahead in life because we are afraid of failure, or it can help hold us back from realizing our dreams, desires, and goals because we don't think we can do it. For many, it seems easier to be afraid than to believe in success. We need to honestly fact, face our fears by writing them down and looking at them realistically. And that means not rationalizing them, minimizing them, or succumbing to the, the power in our lives. Wow, I love that. And you know what? You have a good quote in that one too, in that chapter, Love Versus Fear. You have a great quote, and it says, when the power of love, and it's important for right now, when the power of love overcomes the love of power, the world will know peace. Jimi Hendrix. Oh, I like that. Yeah, that Jimi was Hendrix. yours, yeah. Yeah, Jimi Hendrix, yeah. That's very, very true. Very, it's very true. perfect now. Yeah, it is the perfect now. I, I, I'm finding that I, I look at this thing with Putin and I just I want to find out more, of course, psychologically about this person. Um, and it's very interesting what people are saying, the pundits and people are saying about him and psychologically about him and so forth. And he's been isolated from the world. He's the power. And it's very interesting to see his background. And, uh, well, I always, have think no of, sense. I, I always think of what our friend Mavis Patilla said. When I asked her, we were in New York, and we asked her, what causes somebody to be a sociopath or a psychopath? Because this is what we're looking at. And she said, it's when the soul doesn't enter the body. And she said, you pray for the soul, but it doesn't enter the body. How interesting. And that's how he could be so soulless and heartless. Or, or could it also be that he's, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? When the soul leaves the body um, from a trauma when they're young. Mm -hmm. Could be. The soul leaves the body, part of the soul leaves mm -hmm. the body. Yeah. I mean, there's so many factors involved, but to be not aware about all the killings of human beings and, mm. and that, that, that just, I don't, I don't understand that to me. I know. I don't understand. That's, that's a hard part of this, the physical earth, this physical yeah. school. Well, there's really, a lot of unfinished business. That's for damn sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's very, very true. Mm. Yeah. So I, I always say to people, if you can leave this earth and you make it, uh, leave it a better place when you found it, then your life is a success. Yeah. Yeah. I had a couple of questions. And so I want to yes. read these questions for you because um, some, some people wrote these to me for you to, to ask you. She, a woman named Luisa Bazo says, my husband or a husband that suffered loss of memory for a few years after a brain surgery and before he passed did not recognize his wife, who was the love of his life. Does the husband on the other side know that the wife suffered for not for he that he didn't recognize her yes yes very much so and it wasn't his fault so right it wasn't his fault so i wouldn't say yeah. suffering um it happens a lot also with in my experience i found out that there are a lot of people that who have alzheimer's uh dementia mm -hmm. and then when they pass over and um they, I remember one in particular, one man said to his daughter, why weren't there any people, many people at my funeral? Because he knew a lot of people. He was very well known. And she said, well, because you had um, dementia or Alzheimer's rather for about five, five to 10 years. So many of the people you knew died or they had gone. 
and and he was um, aware when she said that. But for, for him, because he was in a space of now he's in a space of there's no time, only linear time down here, and it seemed like a very strange thing for him because he couldn't tell time. But he understood that when she said that. It made it clearer for him. Mm. So, um, I, you know, it's hard to say, but uh, there have been some, again, each individual experience is so different. There have been some situations where I brought through Alzheimer's victims or, or uh, dementia people, and they remember everything. So, and they just couldn't communicate it, but the soul was very aware. So it goes back both ways. And, I, and yeah. again, I don't know. Each one is an individual. Okay, that's okay. I have another question here, and this is from Tracy Hildreth. She said, "I believe my father is in the process of transitioning, so her father is pa soon to be passing over." Okay, so let's stop right there, Kelly. So, okay. because he's in the middle of transition, what that means many times is, and, and I will stand by this one, because he's in well, a, a, a beginning of transition. Many in the spirit side of life are transitioning, are waiting and preparing for his arrival, and they get preparing for his arrival for Earth time could be a year. I have to get everything ready for him. So when he passes over, it'll be a very smooth passing. And he'll feel as if he just woke up and he's back home again. And they might create, many times they will tend to create, if you will, with their thoughts, they'll create um, the mother's house. And it'll mm. look exactly like the mother's house that he grew up in because it'll help with his transition. And he'll he's back into mom's house. It'll look uh -huh. familiar to him. So they do a lot of that. So the, we know no one ever dies alone. In the transitioning part, they're also moving in to help him. So got to remember okay. that. Okay. The soul is also transitioning. And the soul has done this millions of times before. Right. Not thousands, but millions. It's left the physical body, the human body, or other types of bodies. But the, the soul moves in out of the body every day. It goes in out. So remember that dream state or sleep state. So it, it, in the transition period, it's just moving out of the body. It's getting ready to prepare for the final. Okay. Yeah. And Go she on. says, um, I have forgiven him. So Good. that's a problem. Fantastic. She said, and I've, I've sent that message to him from me to his highest self in hopes Good. that it, when it's his time, he'll go peacefully. Will I need to do this again after he passes away? So well, he hold receives on, right, the message. Wait, too fast. So wait, 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 wait. <laughs> wait this up too fast. So first of all, read that again about the forgiveness. She says, I have forgiven him. Okay. And I've sent him a message to, to his, his highest heart. self. Okay, let's stop right there. So everybody that's watching this, that's the number one thing you can do. For those who hurt you, and let's say they can't communicate. Uh, let's say they've passed over to this side. They can still feel and hear your forgiveness prayers, your thoughts. And we have to remember in forgiveness, it's a, it's a gift we give ourselves as well. You have to remember that those who do us wrong, many times, my good friend Kelly White taught me this, that those people are limited, that they may not be aware that they've done something bad because they don't know any better. Or they may be in a position where they just have don't have that idea that it actually affected you. This happened to me about a week ago with someone and they've not affected me. So in some ways they're harmless in that respect because they don't know any better. So when we talk about forgiveness and it's hard for a lot of you to forgive people, they might not be aware of it and it might not be the right thing that they did. So you might be angry at the situation and what they did, but don't be angry at them because they might not know any better. The best thing you do to help them to understand it is to forgive them. Continue. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, will I need, once he passes, will I need to do this again so he can receive that message fully? Um, I would say, no, you, you don't need to, but it sounds like a, a chore, actually, because send, you should send him love all the time because it's the right thing to do. It's not just something, I forgive you, goodbye. Continue <laughs> to love him. That's what you really should do is continue to love him. and under, It sounds like it's just, I'm going to forgive him, move on. It's an understanding that you come to. It's not just a one, you push a button, it's done. It's an overwhelming understanding and unconditionally forgive him in every way because mm -hmm. what has he taught you this lifetime? I'm sure there's, you know, the human being always tends to go to the negative things. What about the good things and the positive things that he taught you, that he left you with? He gave you life. There are many positive things. We, we look, look at people with negative, think of the positive things they left us or gave us. Yeah. Oh, that's very good. That So what you're saying also when you say this is, change your thinking which i love in your book when you talk about change your thinking and if we're going to talk about un, you know unfinished business one of the things you can do is change your thoughts change the way you think change your outlook on things really change it and and try to see love in everything even in the worst circumstances try to think of love how is this loving how is this going to be loving how can i send love to people that die in the war how is there where, where's love can i want to send love to, to 
to open up Putin, to bring his soul back to love. How can I bring love to a certain situation in my life, to a person that treated me badly? Where is the love? What can I do? Can I say something kind? Can I do something? Or maybe not to that person, but maybe somebody else could do something kind to. Yeah. There's got to be love. I mean, everywhere I look around you, there's, there's a beautiful world around us too. Don't be so stuck on the negative things, but try to stay positive. As bad as things get, and this is and sometimes you have to self-talk. As, as negative and as bad things get, I try to find the better. And not in that situation, I look around and say, well, isn't that a beautiful sunset? Well, that's a lovely tree. I mean, try to find the magic that we're surrounded with. Don't be, don't be so myopic with your thinking and vision. Right. But see the broader picture because it's a bigger picture. Remember, you're in school. You're in soul school here. And there's going to be a lot of things that set you off. Don't get caught up in that of those small things. Don't get caught up in the small things. It's a bigger picture that matters. Well, and as you were saying that, I was thinking to myself, because I've had so many clients that are negative, and when they cross over, think about this: you don't want to cross over and then do a life review where you're looking at you're looking at your life review, and you'll think, "Oh my God, I was such a negative person." Change it now. Change your thoughts now. Look at all the time I wasted being negative. Right. Look at all that energy that was wasted on you know. Now when I lose my keys in my house or my wallet or my glasses, whatever. <laughs> well. They, and I used to get frustrated. Okay, where did I leave this or that? A lot of us do it. I think, you know what? They can't grow legs and feet and walk out the door. So they're here <laughs> some. And that's just the way it is. It's, and it's true. It's like, yeah. Yeah. and then, and my, I use my mantra all the time. It is what it is. And that's all that it is. Don't let it upset you. Even I have a, a lady that works with me here at the house and talk about her family being upset because someone did this and did that. The other family member, I'm like, so what? It doesn't matter. It is what it is. It's all that it is. Don't get caught up with the little small, small stuff. Right. No, look at the bigger picture. So you can do. And she goes, I don't get involved. I said, that's good. Don't get involved. You shouldn't. It's not your stuff. But, you know, bring bring love. And another thing happened my show today was someone was talking about this. You can't force somebody to love. You can't force somebody to be a certain way. All you can do is plant the seeds for them. So you can just plant seeds. But don't get caught up in it because it's not your stuff. You can just spread the light. You can you can be who you are. And by example, show them. That's, that's right. the best way. Well, let's talk about... Um guilt and shame for unfinished business guilt and shame because you talk about in your book you've got a great story about survivor guilt and i've had clients that have had survivor guilt yeah i i went to the aids crisis and um mm -hmm. believe me i have seen a lot of friends pass over a lot of my partners passed over a lot of that a lot of that happened um and i was working with aids product los angeles when it first started i was one of the first 16 people that started that in los angeles and um, I used to, my, one of my jobs there was to drive the mothers of oh. AIDS uh, victims to group meetings. Wow. Wow. And, and to follow through with them after the, the son or daughter or whatever passed over. And um, there was a lot of guilt there. A lot of guilt. Um, yeah. And um, we don't want to have guilt. We just don't want that. Um, and resentment. That's why you have to live today fully. Fully and live in the moment. I, again, I always to go back to that analogy of tomorrow is your last day on this earth. What would you do today? You know, what would you right. do? Not to have guilt. Um, right. That's that's the, the simplest way to live. Look at the simple things. But a survivor's guilt. A lot of people have it. I know a lot of people, well, not a lot, several who survived World War II in Auschwitz, mm -hmm. and um, they felt guilty that they didn't go. But I said, well, the bigger picture is you had to tell, spread the word afterwards. You had to be a survivor to tell people right. the story. That's right. really important to make sure it doesn't happen again. And and they got that, but. There, there is, there is a tendency for people to have that. You know better than I do about that. I do. I had a client who lost his family in a plane accident when he was fourteen, and the whole family perished in a plane accident, and he survived because he wasn't there. He wasn't there because he had to go to a basketball game. So his parents said, "That's all right. You'll take the plane after the next day, and you'll we'll meet you then." And of course, that didn't happen. So he, along with his twin brother, too. I mean, they all. They all perished except for him. And the 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 guilt that he felt for not being on that plane, I kept saying, oh, well, listen, you were not supposed to be there. If you were, you would have been on that plane. You yeah, weren't it's, supposed to. It's true. Again, we have to look at it from a soul's perspective, mm -hmm. not human perspective. And on a soul's perspective, that's yes. again, a lesson to learn, a hard lesson. Oh, it's a big lesson. It's an advanced yeah. class lesson when you lose your entire family. I love, I'm going to use that term. It was an advanced class lesson. Yeah. It's That's true. a good one. I always yeah. look at the school down here because I can't look at this as real because mm -hmm. this isn't real. This is an illusion. This is just for our souls to go through experiences and grow. This isn't real. 
It's not. And uh, we get to the side and look back there. I say, oh, it's, it's, that's a place we created. It was created for us, or we created to create to go through these lessons for our soul to grow. And that's a tough one. Those are that's an advanced class lesson because that's tough when losing all of them. And then that soul chose that. That soul group chose that. Right. For that one soul right. to perhaps to grow, to understand, to love themselves right. more. To, who knows what the lessons were? It's not just one simple lesson. It could be multi lessons, and it could also be a lesson which that soul is going to learn later in their life. And that soul will help other people hopefully later on in their life who've yes. gone through very similar situations. It happens all the time with them that I've seen with parents who lose children. And the time it happens, they say, I can't go on. I don't want to live anymore. And later on, they tend to, it forces them to get on their path. And many times it ends up, they help other parents go through the bereavement process. So right. I, I've seen that happen many, many, many times. There's no, I believe, Kelly, there are no accidents. I know it sounds really strange. Yeah. Car accidents, a plane accident. I don't believe there are accidents. I think that the spirit world is such an intelligence, such a divine intelligence beyond the human comprehension that is in effect here, that they pull the strings, that there's a thread, this threads that runs throughout. Um, I've been lucky enough, fortunate enough to have a near-death experience where I've been aware of, if you will, the threads, yeah. um, which are all connected. So I have to believe there's a greater intelligence that there are no accidents, just situations and opportun opportunities. Right. Now we might end up at the time when something happens, what that opportunity is. It will come maybe years later, but I always look at things as opportunities now. And as I get older, more and more they're opportunities. Right. That's yeah. so true. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I, I lost once I lost a ring, a really special ring. It was an amethyst ring from Brazil that was kind of I saw on a journey there and it was stolen from my house. Mm. And, and I got upset at first because of emotional sentimental, but then right away I said, wait, it, the person that took that needs it more than I do now. Wow. So it's how you look at it. It's changing your perspective of things. And yeah. it's true that, that whoever owns that needed it more than me, or I, I had my chance, but now someone else has it. Right. Wow. So let me, let's talk about for a second. Let me ask you about, let's say uh, you have a, a, a parent that has been extremely abusive and they die very and they common, die very, common, very right. common and so when you talk about unfinished business the person that is alive the the, the son or daughter yeah. never really got to deal with it or with it and they never got to express themselves to their father and maybe they stopped talking to their father for 10 years before you know before he died so what i have an idea about that but i'm curious about you what do you think about that i think they have a choice okay. i think there's a choice there and i think they have a choice to be the victim or to rise above it and be the better then. And I think they can look at that situation and see, well, well, maybe the father, what was the father's background? Maybe the father was abused when he was a young person and horrible. And what good would it do to hold on to that and be angry with him? That would make, that would continue it to grow and boil, if you will, cook. Instead of stopping and breaking that pattern, forgive him for whatever reason. Maybe that person doesn't know the reason why they were abused, why it happened, but they know it was wrong. So you could be, again, be wrong in the situation, but not the person itself. Because who knows why they did that? So I would rise above it and, and, and use it as an opportunity to help other people who are in that situation, uh, who are in abusive situations, to, to help them to forgive those who abuse them. And that person can easily write a letter to the spirit, the person in the spirit world, or say, I, I would like to write a letter or a card. I really do. I do that. And then I just put it away or I rip it up after I'm done or I, I, I leave it for that person's birthday. Mm -hmm. And I read it again, and then I let I burn it up and let it go, and I forgive them, and I love them. And I don't know the whole reason why they did that, but I know they they loved me. But maybe they were skewed when they were a young person. Yeah, maybe one of the things that I have my people do, or whoever, when I talk about this, is I have them use what's called the empty chair. Are you familiar with that? The empty sure. chair, sure. which is a it's a real gestalt technique in psychology, but it's really great for. Mediumship, but it's Spatilla, Mavis Patilla also does that with an exercise. Oh, I didn't yes. know that. Yes, yes. Go yes. figure. Well, I love this technique because you put them, you put your loved or the person that you're you have a situation with that you're angry at or unresolved business or unresolved feelings, you put them in a chair, and even though they're passed over on the other side, they will be sitting in that chair and you tell them exactly what how you feel, how they hurt you. They'll be there, they will be listening to you. It's a, a really great, powerful technique. Very good one. Excellent. Excellent one. Sure. Yeah. Definitely. Sure. Definitely. Um, but then also, I think then at the end of that, they can think of the positive things. And exactly. 
Exactly. Because right? you want to always leave with the positive, not the negative. So you want to yeah. you know, live the rest of your life. And, and, and see it for what it is. And don't make it rule your life. Let it see that it was just a, a experience. Right. It was a situation. And I know that there are some, not every abuse situation, but I know there are situations as a young kid when there's abuse happening or certain problems. And um, it makes a person a better person later on. Right. Personally, I was abused as a kid. And I'll tell you something. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't. So it's made me a better person. And it helps um, you to understand abuse from all, from that like from angle. All their angles, abuse, yeah. uh, addiction, everything, isolation, all that sort of thing. It teaches us, it teaches, it makes us a better person. Right. And again, we always have a choice. There's always a choice, whether we can be better than rise up or fall down. Okay. Right. And a lot of people who become victims have a really um, isolated life. And it becomes a point where no one wants to be around that victim because all they talk about are negative things and that energy, that sphere of energy. Oh. Around them. You, you, you know this. And I don't, I actually got rid of a friend for 25 years. She was a friend and she would, she would, oh, just be nagging and angry about this and about husband not working and, this, and everything was negative. And she came to my house where I live and I have a nice garden here, as you know, a very nice garden I created. And we're walking around most people like, wow. And it's just to put my love and energy into it. And it's nice. It's a nice space. It's nice to be in the country. And she walked in and said, I don't like the country. I don't like trees, but I kind of like your place. Why is that? And at that moment, I thought, this is taking up a lot of my energy and I don't want to support this anymore. So I said, <laughs> bye bye. I can't have you in my space anymore at all. Wow. Because in your life, you want people that support you and enable yeah. you, not disable you. And that comes right. in all different ways, you know, all different ways. And and, and recently in, in my life, um, there have been people that, um, a person or so forth, that you want to help or you want to be around. and you think they get it and you find out they don't understand you <laughs> for whatever reason. And you got to yeah. let them go too, because they don't get it. They're not, that's not supportive. They're not, again, you want people in your life that support you, enhance mm -hmm. your life, not take away from your life, not using you, stuff like that. And you got to be very selective. And as you get older, by the way, it happens even more. It does happen <laughs> because your tolerance level gets less. <laughs> your container's like, no, I'm full. I can't I think, handle it anymore. I can't take it. I think I have five friends now. <laughs> well, you're, you're, you're here. Yeah. <laughs> it's so true. As you get older, your friends get less and less because you don't have time for it. You don't have time for it. You're right. No tolerance. You just don't. You just no. can't take any nonsense. My favorite word. Here's a question. And this is from Shannon Michelle Wells. She said, hi, from Virginia. I lost my son unexpectedly, and yes, I never got to say goodbye, unfortunately. So let's talk about when you lose somebody unexpectedly. Okay. So uh, I'm going to just be, um, I'm going to reiter reiterate what I said before, that there are no accidents. And, and, and unexpectedly in the physical sense, and it was unexpected. It wasn't known. Right. Um, they're still alive. They're not dead. They're very, very much alive. So your son is very, very alive. And, and probably wondering why you're not speaking to him or why you won't hear him. And it gets very, very frustrating from the spirit side of life when they step out of the body. And I suggest you watch the movie Ghost again because it depicts it really well, where he's around and no one hears him. And that's really what you want to do. You want to still your mind into a space and listen to him speak to you in your heart. That's really what he would like. So I would say, why can't you, why won't you listen to him? Why won't you hear me? Why won't you hear me? Because that's, I'm hearing from the spirit world all the time. Why don't they hear me? What, when my dog Boo Boo passed over, he said to my part-time Brian, he said, he, I'm with him every day. I look up at him and I'm dancing and he won't talk to me, my dog. So I told Brian, the, the dog is talking to you all the time. Why won't you listen? And he did. He listened. He took a nap and had an experience with the dog and now hears him. But they're always around saying to me, why don't they hear me? Why don't they? As we here on this earth say, I lost them. And the other side is saying, why won't they hear me? They love me. I thought they loved me. I thought they loved me. So they're there. But we got to still our minds when we think too much. We block them out. And when we start hearing from the heart and in the silence, then we get the nuances of the messages. Okay. So you can speak to them. They hear your thoughts very, very well. Your thoughts are amplified in the spirit vibration. They're amplified. So they feel your love. They know mm -hmm. your thoughts. So you can speak to him. There's they have they don't become a figment of imagination, just disappear. They're more with you now than they were before. Right. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So they always hear you. So that there's no such thing as death. There's no dead. You know, as Gordon Smith says, uh, you can't die for the rest of you. For <laughs> <laughs> and we're the earthbound ones because we're stuck here in this body. They're not. They <laughs> it's interesting time. times, I might add. <laughs> You're all around us all the time. Love never totally. dies. 
and they're always around us because yeah. don't think of it in linear terms in human terms but think right. of it as multi-sensory they're always around us right so carlene reese has says something she says this is perfect timing i spoke to my mom today and she told me that my aunt went to a psychic and he told her that his her sister died a few years ago and still on the earth and still on the earth because of unresolved conflict she said i don't buy it thoughts i don't buy it either I don't buy it. Well, not at all that. dumbest thing no. i ever heard see that that's the that's the bad part about people who have been psychic and mediumship who are undeveloped properly that is not correct so why would someone be earthbound per se when that's the world over there of love and hell and beauty and i would be stuck down here like i just said where the where the earthbound ones there are some parts like i wrote in the show ghost whisper did where there could be an emotional connection to a situation that they're still aware of here but the emotional upset like for instance when i talk about the book and i've talked about this before where a father might know that he didn't tell his daughter he loved her enough and he might feel guilty about that on the other side and he might that might bother him on the other side. He might mm -hmm. have that sense that I didn't say I loved her enough, and because I didn't say I loved her enough, it didn't it affected her. She couldn't love people. She couldn't trust people, and he feels bad about that. And that mindset might have he might be on that mindset on the other side, and that is more a little different than being stuck down here. I, I don't believe uh, necessarily in that, but I, again, I don't know. But for the I don't either. I don't, I don't believe that. And the so more here, you work, the more that, that th things change as you do mediumship, yeah. you learn as you grow. I mean, the first book I wrote talking to heaven about suicide, I have a whole different look on it now than I did then. So, well, I, you will hold that thought for a second because Helen okay. Sotomayor says, My son committed, but I actually we use the term completed, completed now. My son completed suicide, and I'm having a hard time. So, when talk about unfinished business, and let's talk about suicide. Oh, good. Okay. So we're suicide. So there are all different types of suicide. So suicide is when the soul leaves the body. Now, how do we not know that the soul group got together and the people um, had to learn about suicide and, and what it would be like for to lose someone in the family member, a family member, and how would we deal with it? So one of the souls might volunteer, okay, I'll go early and, and teach the rest of you about that. That could be one reason. Another reason could be that that soul um, came back too early in that it was so excited to come back and start over again that it came back, I'm going to say before it's time, because we do have a choice. And and many times there are the elders, the wise ones, the guides, the teachers say, here's a particular time to come in. But there are some souls that tend to come in a little bit before that, at that part, before the moment. And they don't feel like they fit in. They're out of sync. It happens to a couple of my family members, actually. And mm -hmm. it could be suicide. Um, it could be also a mental disorder with the with that soul, yeah. that, that suicide. There's so many different reasons of suicide. Right. So right. we can't say it's just one reason behind. Well, you're absolutely right, because in the psychology, they used to say it was dyadic in nature. So it was opposed to somebody else. But that's really, it, I would say that's in some of the cases, but not at not all the cases. Not at all. Not at it's all. Multi, it's multi. Multi reasons here. Multi -reasons. Definitely. But the problem with the people on the earth, the humans, or they take it personally. I could have yeah. done better. If I treated my son better, he wouldn't have done this. If, yeah. And this is a true of like a car accident. I've heard this before where a father said, if I didn't do this, he wouldn't have, if I needed keys, he wouldn't have had to go a car accident. Again, should have, what is, could have. Right. You can't do that to yourself because right. you know, you can't play God. You know, you don't, you, you know, you should be happy that you, you really should put your, your thoughts on that your son is not dead. There's no death. And, and don't waste your life because the worst thing one could do is to put themselves in a headspace of, oh my God, my son committed suicide or, yeah. and, and leave it like that. And the poor son is like, please don't think of me that way. You're wasting your time on this earth. With, you could do so many positive things. Stop wasting your time. I'm alive. I'm fine. So we got to think of it that way too. You're a soul having this experience and you have to honor, honor his life by doing positive things, maybe things that he wanted to do with his life, yeah. helping somebody else. Instead of saying that that in that space of he completed suicide, you know, don't do that. He's not in hell. There's no such thing as hell. No such yeah. thing as harm. A soul can never be harmed. So do ever never think that a soul's harmed because they're suicide. I remember the one suicide I worked with years ago, and I told this before on this show, was a, a lady came to my uh, when I did private readings 25 years ago, and she from flew from South Africa. And I remember um, as I'm talking to this lovely lady. Her son came to me and he showed me exactly. I became him. And I went to the backyard of the house and I climbed a tree and I put a rope around the branch and I hung myself and I popped out of the head. And the first thought was without time even leaving, he popped out of the head and said, oh my gosh, my mom and dad are going to find me. What are they going to think? 
Oh, and many times gosh. that happens yeah. with, with um, people like that. Yeah. My brother-in-law completed suicide as well. And uh, that was um, an act, um, that, that, was, that was a tough one, real tough one. Multi-layered, by the way, because you never know the reason behind it. Um, uh, you know, we found out when he was 19, he was a rookie uh, cop and he shot someone. And oh. it, it hurt him that much. And 30 or 40 years later, 30 years oh, later, he did himself. There's so many reasons behind that. But the most important thing with suicide is the soul can never be harmed. That's most important to know right. that. All right. Oh, wow, James. So Joanne Wilson says, I think that people can get stuck in a, in the past and they can't move on from their mistakes or their regrets or what others have hurt them instead of learning the lesson. What's done is done. It's hard, to, but it takes away from our present peace and future. Very true. 100% living in the moment, living in the moment. Yeah. I just talked about this recently when my Maisie died, when my, my doggy Maisie passed um, yeah. to the other side. And um, after she passed, she taught me a lot. But when she passed, I was kind of shocked shock at the reaction because I wasn't really in grief. And I knew the reason I wasn't in grief was because I lived every moment fully with her. And I just lived yeah. every moment fully. So I had nothing to grieve because I was lived every moment fully and she's still with me. So I'm, I'm, I'm still, you know, I'm very aware of that and nothing to be in grief about because I lived the best I could with her. Oh, you we did an all, incredible job with her. We could all do that though. We yeah. could all love someone the most we can that day. You know, really, we can. Don't hurt people, but build people up. Don't hurt people. All right. Susie Wright says, hi, James and Kelly. Do do souls always transition at the divine time, or is it possible for a soul to leave and not want to cross over? <laughs> hmm. Well, this is very interesting. Um, back to suicide for a second. Um, and, and, and a couple other things. Uh, I think everything is possible. I think there are options. Clay, I don't know what you'd think about this, but I describe this in one of my books where we do have free will. Right? There's a yeah. choice. Every choice in everything. So if, if there was a, a soul, that is, now this is an old analogy because of technology, but let's say someone's an ATM machine and um, someone comes up behind them and robs them and shoots them and takes their money. The person that shoots them had the choice. Maybe they had a choice to shoot them and take, they didn't have to, but they did. That creates a karmic connection with them. That creates this this connection there. Now, that might not have been in that soul's destiny that was killed that way. They might not have chosen that, but that other person created that to happen. Mm. So that is a possibility. I don't know, even in wars, that could be a possibility. Or in another war, the person that was killed might have killed someone in a previous war. So we don't know. Right, right. We just don't know. But there is free choice. There is free will, for sure, yeah. in various situations. Yeah. But you always going to do what's the best thing out of a loving space if you do everything you do is come from love that's really what would be your guidepost it's david vigiano hi david our friend david he hi says, david he says what happens to the souls of people who have alzheimer's can a soul get frustrated when it can't communicate with the loved ones that they love well i i don't know because i don't i've never had that situation it almost reminds me every day um I, I, it's it's hard to say. I, I don't know, David. It's hard to say because there may be others. There are others on the side around that soul who are helping them on that level that they're at with the Alzheimer's. Um, and I, I, I just I don't know. It could be frustrating. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure yeah. of that. One. Yeah. Um, so I'm ask a question about miscarriages. Um, and, and miscarriages. It's just uh, for me. I've learned that miscarriages are really a preparation for the for the next baby to come through. It's a natural way to. Um, for the mother to prepare for the next baby, perhaps. And, and, and really, it's a lesson for the mother of self-love. Abortion also uh, is a, uh, really a lesson of self-love. Remember, the soul doesn't enter the body till around the eighth or ninth or tenth, fully to the tenth, eighth or ninth month, but stays in usually the tenth will stay in, but goes in and out of that body quite a bit until around the ninth month where it's like, oh, do I really get to stay here and get snowed? <laughs> getting cramped and uh, it, does. it happens that way. I've, I've been in thousands of readings that talk about that. And then in the temple it stays in, but um, yeah, I've never had experience where a soul has left and said, oh, I want to come back to this physical world. I've never had yeah. that experience. No, I haven't either. I haven't no, either. Just the opposite, quite the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> and quite the opposite when even the meditations that I've done, I've done here and a lot of meditations, I do workshops where people say, do we have to come back? Do we have to leave that peace? It's kind of right. minimalistic, but it's, it's true. It's the same thing in spirit. When you're there, 
and it's an overwhelming feeling of love and freedom, you don't want to come back to this dense vibration because this is not your natural world. This is your schoolhouse. Yeah. This is this thing that the encasement here. It but feels so good on the other side. You don't want to come back. It feels yeah. so good. And people say, well, if we knew how good it was, why wouldn't we all just leave? Well, because you have work to do here. Exactly. Because you want to feel better. You want to feel better. So these opportunities that are really, really hard lessons are yeah. lessons that will make you feel better when you pass over. It'll put you. It'll put you in a better place. And and speaking of the, you know, the, you want to feel better. And a way to feel better is to really start to let go of negative thoughts, let go of of anything that's held you back. Because that's what we're talking. You don't want to have that unfinished business either when you pass away. You want to do everything that you could possibly do here, don't you think? Exactly. Um, I just spent the week with a, um, a friend uh, who turned 60, spent the week here with his puppy dog who's six months old. And it was a big dog. And of course, the dog and I connected immediately. And and I just fell right into that dog would not leave me alone because the dog and I connected because of puppy love and the innocence. And that's kind of who I am in that I keep that young little boy, the imagination, the joyfulness. I try never to forget it. And I try to live my life with that excitement. And each moment is something good and positive and how can i make this moment better i, I live that way and it, that's the truth I, you actually do i do and, and I've, i had to train myself to think that way because the negative stuff wasn't doing any good for me it wasn't and then when someone else acts negative and people that are around me as you know i call them on it I yes he that, does what's the right thing to do? <laughs> how would you feel if someone did that to you right and and many times they don't get it but then explain it's like, oh i didn't see it that way Okay, I just want, I know I'm not judging you. I just want you to see it a different way because that's yeah. how it was affected to someone. So try right. to see the positive. Try to be that young girl, that young boy again, and try to have that, that joy in each moment. Find the fun yeah. in each moment. Even when I lose my clicker for my television, I have hide and go seek. Where's the, the clicker for the television? <laughs> I have to program it again. Where's that password again? That's password <laughs> email. Let's play hide and seek. Oh yeah. my gosh. So here's a good one. Karen Abercrombie says, my brother died alone and my mom has beaten herself up ever no, since. No ever, okay. No one ever dies alone. First right. of all. No one ever dies alone. So you always have people in the spirit world who were ready for that passing, even if it's a car accident, even if it's an overdose, even if it's unexpected. Right. The spirit world is prepared for this. They know it. So no one yes. ever dies alone, number one. Yes. And the spirit people often will say, I'd rather no one see, I'd rather you not be there when I go. And we see this all the time in nursing homes and rehabilitation places and hospices where this family visits and it happened to my mother, same thing. People, family visit, then they leave the room and the person then passes. It happens. No one, you know, we, leave, we come in alone, we go out alone. They prefer that. Right, right. Uh, Cat Feather says, my mom was in a coma and I talked to her in our minds. Good. And she said, I asked for a sign that she heard me and I got an incredible sign after she passed. I sent her forgiveness, asked her to forgive me, told her how loved she was and I would take care of my father. And I know she heard it. The last thing that goes is the sound, the hearing. They hear us mm -hmm. very much so. Coma, yes, very much so. My, same thing with my dad when he was in a coma. And I said to him, and we, all the kids were there and we said our goodbyes and he wouldn't go. <clears throat> and um, I and I saw my father's head bobbing up and down above his physical body, and I said, "Dad, why won't you leave the body?" And he said, "I just want to make sure you kids won't fight over my house because that was his pride and joy." And we said we would not, and he left. We we with four of us went out of the room, and he left. So the last thing they do, they hear is the last thing that goes. They do hear it. So they, right. she did hear you. For sure. Wow. Joanne Wilson says forgiveness is the key that unlocks your jail cell. Oh, it's great. That's a great one. It's very, very true. Self-imposed, so right? True. Self -imposed. And it's so true that forgiveness, you know, it, it is a gift we give ourselves. It's a medicine because it's toxic. Forgive, you know, not being able to forgive is toxic. It's toxic. Yeah. It sets up a vibration in the body that's kind of acidic, you know, and it'll affect the different organs of the body. It'll affect the energy flow of the body. It'll, it'll stop the energy from flowing through the body because energy flows through the body. And if you're stuck emotionally, say emotionally, you're, you can't forgive somebody. It was a bad relationship or something and your heart space or that emotional centers get kind of get stuck with that. And that takes up room. And so the flow cannot happen naturally. That'll affect you if you if it stays that way. It'll affect the chemistry of the body and create this ease. Oh, you don't want that. No, 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 no. It's exactly what happens. Exactly. Uh, hi, it's exactly. Beth Glonsky says, "I learned from your book that not only can I let go of fear and guilt, I can also let go of pain." Yes. What an eye opener for me! And I reread your book often. 
That's Thank great. you, Beth. Good. 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 Spread the word. Spread the word. That's the books are about. Spread the word, really. Even if it's just sentences, spread the word that'll help people to yeah. spread the seeds, you know, to open up, to, for them to look at something. And it, it's just looking at something and put a different perspective. That's, right. that's all it is. You know, I'd love to write a book where you write like one sentence, but someone looks at it one way, and the next sentence across the page would be looking at it from a different way. It's that be a great, great idea. Well, I, we great. talk about views all the time. Yeah. You know, yeah. which lens are you looking at or what view are you, you know, it's so true, James. That's yeah, a great you mentioned idea. that word to be lens. It's what lens do you have on? How yeah. do you know lens you look at things? Like people that, um, you know, yeah, with the religious background and so forth. So that's the lens that they look through, a religious mm -hmm. lens. That's their lens. And, but a uh, lens that we can all develop um, is forgiveness. Forgiveness and love. And love. And, and diversity. Understanding that people that are different Absolutely. are a good thing. They're a good thing. Mm -hmm. We should never have separativeness. Never. And uh it's not a good thing. Um, right. yeah, not a good thing to do, be separate. We're not. We're, we're together. We're different for a reason. We're, we've been raised in different countries and have different colored skin or speak a different language for different reasons of learning. It's not that we're different. We're all the same. We just have different. Right. We look differently. That's all. Let's learn from one another. All right. Rita Voris says forgiveness of someone on the other side is outside of time and physical timing is not important. You're right. You're, you're right, yeah. Rita. And I'm, I'm going to say something which goes back to another question which was asked earlier about um, some of that passed over that, let's say they did something and they, they abused someone, let's say, here on the earth, and it's hard for them to forgive them here, here on the earth, the person on the earth left behind. If you can forgive them <clears throat> on the other side for what they did, imagine that you, you've taught them on the other side about forgiveness. They might be stuck and you've given them the freedom, you've given them the key to that jail cell to go out. Right. Because we teach those on the other side. Just because people pass over doesn't mean that they know everything. They don't. They learn from our examples down here as well. We're constantly teaching them. So if we can forgive them, we've taught them a valuable lesson of forgiveness. Right. Right. And I love this. Erica Robinson says, positivity can truly rewire a negative mind. So true. 100%. Absolutely. 100%. That's exactly right. And love is the strongest force there is in the universe. Oh, this is a really good question, James. This is from Joseph, Josephine Finelli. She says, so to clarify, after someone passes, if they lived a life of fear, would they carry fear into death? Yeah, sure. Of course. That's their mindset. Sure. That might be very, it's, I've, it's happened. I've had many clients that way who are very afraid, lived in fear. And um, it, it, they, they pass over and they're just not sure where they are. Um, but they do realize, they will realize that they've been living a life in fear and that they live a limited life. They get to the other side. It's not a limited life anymore, but they realize that they could have lived a better life. And that's why I say to people, don't live in worry because it's a wasted energy. Don't it's such that. a wasted energy. It's, a it's such energy. a wasted energy. It's an opportunity, this world. It's, every day right. is an opportunity for love, for growth, for learning. And every obstacle is an opportunity. And every challenge is an opportunity. Exactly. And we're go we come here to have obstacles and challenges. That's the only reason we come back. That's it. Yeah, and to grow and to learn to help people, to, to right. teach others as well. But we have to, we don't have this on the other side of life. We don't have this anywhere else. This earth school is one made up of obstacles. It's building blocks down here. These are the building yeah. blocks. And these are the basic building blocks about love and about fear and about abandonment and about compassion and peace it's all here what are we going to do with it now that we've been given it it's up to us to use it in the right way you know right on so tell me about your shamrock sale oh the shamrock sale yes. okay so the shamrock sale we're having um the shamrock sale is for my school the jp school of mystical arts which is getting a whole new look next month it'll be up for a new brand new look we've been working on for over a year now and um we every St. Patrick's Day, every St. Patrick's Day, or we do a I do a sale for twenty five percent off any course. So we did this past St. Patrick's Day, and it did really really well. And people said, "Can you extend it?" So we did. We extended it till midnight tonight. So any course in my Thanks. school is twenty five percent off. So just use the code Lucky twenty five on the checkout, and you get twenty five percent off. That's what it is, and it's good for any it's for any uh, course. There are many many courses. So um, yeah, that's it's it's great. It's super. So and also, I'm doing something with um, Hay House, which here we go. Thank you, Renee. And it's the link to the four-day challenge. And this is a link right here you want to use. And that is to find out. It's a course I did with them, and it's about um, finding your spiritual gifts. Are you a healer, a psychic, or a medium? Or are you a healer medium? So there's a test to take, and it's a free four-day challenge I, I'm doing. And that's um, that's where you get the link, and you can find that if you're more resonant and more healing, or mediumistic, or more psychic. 
I took it. I was. I went to medium. It went to medium. Mm -hmm. See, I, I, mine went to healer medium. So that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's that's a good one. It's a really interesting one. A lot of people say it's right on, and it's pretty right on. I got to say. Yeah. So. I, yeah, I liked it a lot. This is a good question from uh, Trudy Dane. Do negative people know that they are negative? Hmm. Some do, and some are so unconscious that they don't. Well, you, you explain this a lot. I mean, you know, yeah. that Kelly said to me something was really, and, I, and what Kelly says, it sticks in my head because, and I think I used it today for someone, they're unconscious. They're an unconscious narcissist. Yeah, that's exactly. And I did say that. <laughs> you did say that. That's so true. Yeah. Um, there are some people that don't realize what they've done until they pass over. And mm -hmm. the majority of people on this earth, unfortunately, I we, we call them like sleepwalking because they're not aware. They're unaware, totally yeah. unaware. Until they pass over and they realize, oh. So that's why I wrote Unfinished Business because I didn't want them to get that. I want them to be awake. That's also where it came down to wake people right. up. Well, and that's why the book is so psychologically sound, James, because you give really good concrete example and concrete advice about how to stay awake, how to be conscious. And if you're conscious and you're kind and you're compassionate, you won't have unfinished business. Exactly. You'll have a happier life. Yes. Um, right now in this war, that's the worst thing one could do is war. It's, it's the worst. You're just killing people. Right. That's bad. That's very baby. I don't want to insult babies, but negative baby souls that would think power and greed and that's what they, that's what they're about. That's a baby soul. That's and we have to use our positivity to help with that because yeah. that's that's a negative type of thing. You don't use the energy that way. That's right. that's an optimist. Right. Wayne Baldwin says we have the right to choose our attitude, and that's Viktor Frankl. And Viktor Frankl was a wonderful existentialist. Mm -hmm. And yes, we can change our we can choose our attitude. Absolutely, choose yeah. something positive. Make a really good choice with that. You know, I, I use this analogy once where I say, you know, I, I, I there's, uh, you know, there's like a dial on music. Mm -hmm. You know, ninety eight point seven is is negativity and fear and news and depression, and then one hundred six point seven is joy and happiness and dancing. I don't know about you, but I'm going to listen to one hundred six point seven. Oh, you happy. bet, you bet. <laughs> I have a choice to which dial I'm going to tune into. Oh you no, yeah. no. As soon as somebody, they lose me right away when they're negative. I yeah, mean, well, like immediately. Yeah, I'm very aware. Of now I, I'm very right. aware of victim consciousness, and I don't, I don't have time for it. I don't have time for it anymore. No. I say you need help. You need to help yourself. I'm not going to be the doormat anymore. Sorry, right. I'm not a doormat. Don't nope. put that on me. If you're with that, you have that loaded that truck full of negativity and fear and victimization. You can keep it, but I don't want any of it because I don't believe in that at all. No, no, I don't either. And that's where boundaries get really uh, strong. You have to get really strong with that. Boundaries are part of life. Yep, they sure yeah. are. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh gosh. Well, uh, let me see. I'm going to take this one. Then... Like, Monica, your attitude determines your, your, your attitude determines your attitude, altitude. Yeah. Your attitude determines your altitude. <laughs> I love that. Right. I yeah, love true. that. Um, oh gosh. Well, oh, gosh. gosh. Well, honey. Yes. I try to send love and forgiveness to people passed over and also people here on the earth. Right. And is this, is your book still in print? Unfinished Business? Yeah. Unfinished Business still in print. To it's get on that such on a great around. book. Great book. Yeah, it's great. You book. guys will love it. Newsweek talks about it. Yeah. It was, oh, it was, well, you can find me on Thursdays on Ask Me Anything. It's Thursdays on uh, at 7 p.m. Central Time. How's that been going, Kelly? Really, really well. Really yeah, well. A lot of different types of questions. I get all kinds of different psychological questions. I get a lot of spiritual questions, a lot of mediumship questions. And then I try to do as many, many readings as I possibly can. And next week, we're going to talk about Destiny cards. Okay. We? So next week is going to be a really interesting show. Everybody tune in for this. We're going to be doing Destiny cards. And I'm going to explain where they came from. I'm going to explain all about it. And it's, it's really, I feel that they are the most, one of the best tools that I use when I want to get to know somebody quickly. <laughs> it's called Very Know active. Thyself. I, I have it on an app on the phone, Destiny Card app. Right? I got James into this. <laughs> it's one of the oldest ancient science. Yes. You're going to love it. You guys are going to love next week. So it'll be really fun. It'll be a fun show. So please join me on Thursday and then join us and sign up for some classes with James. It's a, until midnight tonight. They're on sale at 25% off. Yes. Thank All you, right. everybody. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Bye, Thanks, everyone. James. Bye-bye. You've been listening to Both Sides Now and Beyond, featuring spiritual medium and master teacher James Van Prague and spiritual medium and psychotherapist Kelly White. 
That was great. Maybe we changed some lives. And maybe opened up some minds. Which way do I turn? Uh, right. Uh, I, I mean, left. <laughs> the Jim's and Kelly Show.